Yeah, um, need to stress. Okay, well, let's start with hello. <laughs> Welcome to Legends Pod. What's your name? Tell us a little bit about um, yourself. Brian Witzman. Um, I am a six year NFL vet, been on nine teams, and uh, quarantined in Chicago <laughs> at my condo. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting time so far. Um, I've had some. I've had some interesting purchases so far in uh, quarantine, to say the least. So what's the most interesting purchase that you've made? One so, that is actually going to be useful after the quarantine and one that you're kind of like, wow, quarantine's getting to me. Okay. Um, I'd say the, the one that, so I didn't buy it. Like my roommate bought it without me knowing, but we got a uh, bidet. Uh, the, 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 the fountain that washes the, the your The toilet car. thing, yeah. So like... <laughs> So like you install it under the toilet seat, and then there's like a lever and like a, a nozzle. Yeah, it's, it's the whole thing. Um, it's very popular in Europe. I mean, yes, you guys and, are just and in like, Japan, Japan it's a big deal. So you were just there, weren't you? Like a few yes, months ago. Yes, I was. Um, I didn't use a bidet when I was there, though. So um, I wasn't. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit of a shock when you're. I'm not gonna. <laughs> uh, no, but I got I got a guitar. Um, nice. So that's been because I, I I've never played and I kind of wanted to start playing. So um, it's I've just been learning by myself. I have a, a chords app that I kind of look at. So tap into awkward. the creative side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you got nothing but quarantine. Now is right. the time. Wow. Um, like I, <laughs> trying to like get away from like the just being a jock so uh <laughs> nothing wrong with either one but right right uh, so you were you've been in the nfl now for six years yeah this God, was past how does years, time fly so, so fast i feel like everyone i know is just in high school but we're really not right um actually like unfortunate thing with uh with quarantine and everything. So like my birthday is June 16th and like I'm 29. So the last three months of, of the twenties are, are going to just be like, have just been like sitting oh. around. So I'm, I'm bringing that to like my first three months of the thirties. I'm like pushing that on. Like I'm going to call myself 29 until like I feel <laughs> so. Hey, your secret's safe with us until the podcast is released. <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. Well, you never, you never know if it, we get somewhat of a slow rollout might get lucky but right sure, that's uh, uh, yeah <laughs> wouldn't count on it but you never know right so tell us a little more about like how you got involved into the nfl like when did you start playing football and also how tall are you again you're like a giant six, i know that <laughs> six eight okay six eight yeah so i've been on the tallest on every team except for one so nine out eight out of nine i've been the tallest guy um six. the browns there was a guy that was taller but um, how tall was he Six nine. So. What's his name? Um, shoot. Uh, <laughs> got a blank. I, I want to look him up. His, his name is six nine. <laughs> six nine. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. Just if you Google six nine offensive line Browns, it probably will come up. <laughs> right. That's, that's but no. Uh, yeah. It's uh, I started when I was in second grade, um, playing like backyard. Uh, well, so we had like Saturday football where uh. I mean, we, we'd strap on pads and stuff. Um, I don't know if I'd do that now, but uh, <laughs> that's second grade. But, um, yeah, I was, like, a scrawny, skinny kid in high school, so um, I was more of a basketball type. I was, like, I was this tall and pretty much, like, uh, 115 pounds lighter in my sophomore year of high school, so um, didn't really think about football until my senior year. And then uh, – because I was hurt my junior year, and uh, I mean, like my senior year, I played football. Like I was like, oh, I'm actually like good at this. Like I might be able to go to college and play. Um, wow. And yeah, uh, it was very. It was like a two month recruiting process of talking to teams because like nobody really talked to me before then because they didn't really know about me. Um, so you're kind of late yeah. to the game then. What did you say? What was that? I said, so you're kind of late to the game in high school, wouldn't yes. you say? Most people yes. play all four years. I was a, I was a late bloomer for football. Okay. So, um, I mean, 
it kind of hurt me big school wise because a lot of those big schools have their their guys by like late junior year like they're already kind of like committed and um so wisconsin didn't even like reach out to me at all um but they're regretting it later I, I was i was a little bit bitter but i mean uh <laughs> it all it all works out in hindsight, almost maybe getting a late start, maybe like also adds a couple years on the shelf life. Just, you um, know, with, yeah. Physically, um, I guess. Yeah. I mean, just those are years. I feel like in college, like you always hear, like, especially like running backs and stuff like that, like they just take such a beating and, you know, right. they're kind of capped at a certain age potentially in the NFL. So, right. And I mean, running backs have to run around a little bit more. Like we can, yeah. we can stay yeah. put and just be a, uh, like, not moving too much, but for sure. uh, <laughs> no, but for sure. Uh, I mean, I, I'm a little biased, but I think offensive line is the most like physical position in the NFL oh, where right. like, um, I, I agree. <laughs> you're always running at a dude. Like, I mean, you're essentially like, like a wall. Uh, like you literally got to be a block. Like, right. <laughs> and you're going against guys that are like, uh, I mean, a lot of the times a guy weighs like 20, 30 pounds, like heavier than me. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and now it's just getting, like, if I watch, like, the combines and stuff like that, like, defense alignment are just freaks now. Like, it's, yes. it's actually kind of scary. And talk about like, the combine, too. Um, I do have a lot of friends, you know, that are in different sports, and I do have a few friends in the NFL, and I know right now you guys should be drafting, right? Isn't the college draft coming up right now? Um, yeah, so the draft starts tomorrow. Tomorrow. Actually. Okay, yeah. so yeah. How, how do you guys handle that right now? I know you said you've – been on multiple teams um which we can touch base back on but like what do you do when you kind of have to just sit and wait with the quarantine being you know such a weird spot for everyone in sports um yeah so I guess I will say that this one thing so like everyone always asks NFL players like oh like are you excited for the draft like is that <laughs> a fun thing but it's like they don't realize that it's like well like would you be excited if there's a bunch of interns coming in and trying to take your job like no, that's like, the worst thing in the world uh, that's such a good way to put it uh, and like they're younger, the like yeah. they're more durable. Like uh, <laughs> they're young, sure. they're fresh meat. Right, fresh meat. So yeah. uh, no, that's a no. Uh, that's a good point. It's a really good point. Yeah, actually. that's uh, what I'm saying. Isn't it like a weird time for them too? Because um, no one can really go out and do anything. You know, you can't exactly run out and be like, oh, let me show you my skills. Right. Um. I mean, I, I do think it's a little bit unfortunate for, like, uh, lesser known guys because a lot of them miss their pro day. They don't really have numbers out there. So, I mean, they're just kind of uh, – like, people are just – just don't know about them if they, yeah. they really haven't gained any exposure that way. And then there's, like, all-star games and all that, and some of that stuff got um, kind of, like, pushed away too. So, um, I guess, like, if I was coming out and I was a rookie right now, um, I'd be even more nervous uh, wow. just because, I mean, it, it's just tougher. Obviously, they're they're going off of your, like, tape in college, but mm -hmm. a lot of it is, like, the numbers that they see on pro day. So yeah. I wonder with, like, the meet any type of, like, meetings leading up to the draft or, like, there was – a lot of that is that – is that done, like, via conference calls or, like, phone calls? Because – Right. Like, leading um, up to the so actual like, draft? Um. Like, I, I was undrafted, and, like, Got nobody it. really talked to me that much before the draft. Uh, like, I had other guys who were – like, I wasn't invited to the combine or anything. Right. Um, and I had plenty of guys who were, and I was like, I'm a lot better than them. But, I mean, it's uh, it's it's politics at that point as well. Sure, sure. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a it's, – it's such a, um, like, nerve-wracking process for a lot of guys, and that, that just kind of – adds to it that they can't really um and I'd, I'd say from a team standpoint um a lot of teams like want to get a feel in person for players and like right. if they'd mesh with their uh with their program and what they're about and uh they really can't do that now because I mean uh it's kind of like going on like a like a if you're like let's say in the dating sphere if you're on like a FaceTime date person person like it's like it's it's close, but it's not the same thing. So, yeah. um, <laughs> those pictures can do a lot. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so and, man, and you don't have, you don't have that have that connection where like totally. teams have that connection with the players. So yeah. Um, so so you're from Wisconsin. You end up at South Dakota State. 
what – I actually, when I was looking into this, is South Dakota State's rival North Dakota State or is it South Dakota? So South Dakota is like our little brother. Okay. And like North Dakota State is our rival. Got it. So, and it, like um, – I think most people are familiar with, you know, like stuff like Michigan, Ohio State rivalries and that kind of yeah. stuff. But w- what is the South Dakota State, North Dakota State rivalry like? So we actually, I think we got game day this past year um, to come to right. South Dakota State. Uh, right. But that was that was kind of a cool thing to have uh, more right. exposure. But uh, I will say this: whenever I say I'm from South Dakota State, anyone who I would like, anyone, I mean. Pretty much anyone. They're like, oh, Carson Wentz went there, right? <laughs> yeah. North Dakota State. Sure. Like it's <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but no, uh, it's, it's quite the rivalry. We play for a uh, big, like, 40-pound rock. That's kind of uh, it's like a Dakota marker, so it marks the border. And, uh, I mean, so they have a stadium that's like, uh, I think, 20,000. 20, it's indoor. And it's yeah. loud. It's it's as loud as like an NFL stadium oh, wow. at, at their place, just because um, once you put the roof on something, like it can get real loud no matter what. Yep. Um, and you have like there, there's I would say that there's like more like like crazy fans in like North Dakota than like the NFL. Like there was a there was an old like eighty year old grandma behind the bench like swearing at her head coach <laughs> like while he was coaching. It's like, What's going on? Like, yeah, I imagine so, you got you get some real diehards. Like, that's that's like their pro pro team, right? You know, and what I mean? um, I'd say they're like South Dakota people. I'd say are like more like nor like I feel like North Dakota is a little bit a little a little weird up there. So, uh, <laughs> the, the water's a little bit different, maybe up there. Yes, uh, exactly. Um, but no, uh, it was. I mean, it was it was a huge rivalry. Um, unfortunately, only my true freshman year we beat them. Like we lost all four years. And oh damn it! I was gonna ask how many did you beat them? Yeah, like, this is and in the playoffs we lost uh, like once or twice to them. Um, but it was always close. Like it wasn't like ever uh, a blowout or anything. It was always like a score or two, and they just got all the breaks. But. Um, yeah, I, it's it's a sore subject. If I ever see a NDSU person, it's still uh, <laughs> you're like, mm. right? Yeah. Um, we, like, we we've we've got yeah, a few go wins ahead. since then. So nice. Um, nice. Yeah, I feel like FCS is kind of on the map a little bit. Like I feel like in the years past, there was kind of maybe from like the average viewer a little bit more of a gap. But I think yeah. I think that gap's closing. I mean, I would say that. Uh, like my conference in in FCS is better than like the MAC, like oh, I just because yeah. like the top like four or five teams in our conference would beat the MAC teams. I feel like, um, and obviously they are they have like the ninety man and they're like FBS, but um, like we're we have the best conference in in FCS, uh, kind of like, and that's been like proven over the last ten years. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's up? So I mean, <laughs> sorry. No, you're good. What is that like? Um, college, like the college league? Yeah. So like, uh, FBS is like the everyone that plays bowls, like all the bowl games, uh, and the FCS oh, yeah. like it's the football championship subdivision. So like, we actually play playoffs, but um, so we don't play any bowls. Um, oh, cool! I didn't even I never knew that. Yeah. FCS so, teams, they beat, like, FBS teams, like, all the time, though. Like, at week one is, like, there's always FCS teams that win against FBS teams. Like, right. It's so normal now. My brothers actually both played in the FCS, so that's how I actually started okay. kind of following nice. it a little bit. But uh, We're at? In Staten Island, they played at Wagner. Like, okay. No, one, no one's going to know what it is, but, yeah. Right. Shout out Wagner. <laughs> Wagner. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, right. That's um that's crazy. So then you were in South Dakota for your kind of collegiate ball into the yeah. pros, and then you know you now you're in Chicago. Obviously, that's where you're living. Yeah. You played for the Bears in Chicago. What was like that transition like going from South Dakota, and then fast forwarding what looks like about four yeah, years, and now your you're first team. now you're in Chicago. Uh, so my rookie year was uh, the Texans in Houston. 
and I was there for like uh, a year and a half or so. Um, but I guess to your question about the Bears, just like uh, so, I, I already had my condo here, so I was kind of already like settled into Chicago and had a feel for it. But um, no, I mean it was a really cool experience just to be able to play for a team actually like that I actually have like a connection already to the city and uh like I'd, I'd always kind of like wanted to play for the bears um wow. just being like closer to home and everything um i was i was a packer fan growing up but um honestly that means nothing to me now uh <laughs> oh, of course. people are like oh are you still a pack like, i was like no like uh, <laughs> yeah, that's not cool. a little bit yeah. but uh no i mean it was it was an amazing experience playing here uh like soldier field's a uh, crazy like really cool environment and uh I mean so we had a we had a Monday night game against like the Rams that was uh it was Monday or Sunday night um but uh like the Rams were rolling and like everyone was saying like they were gonna just like roll through us and um talking about like uh like high pressure like Aaron Donald's on the other side of the ball, and I know I know I'm going to go against him for like at least like a third to a half of the game, and I mean that's the that's the literally the best guy in the league right now. Yep. And uh, I mean we pulled it out. I think we won like 15 to six, and that was awesome. that was like a very cool thing to experience here, just because like Chicago's been very starved of like good football play for a long time, so that was like a kind of like cool moment to be a part of more than if you went to like the Patriots and they're just like winning all the time and then you yeah, just win yeah, another yeah. game. Like, uh, that was like a very like meaningful, like uh, you could feel the city kind of like wrapping around us. So That's awesome. Aww. Yeah. Soldier um, Field's like an iconic stadium, I feel like in right. American sports. So that's like, that's like such a cool experience. I can imagine. Right. And I don't know if you uh, follow it all, but like there was like, a uh, thing called like club dub after after our wins so no. literally like uh <laughs> after wins like we go to the locker room and there'd be like a disco ball and like uh like lights all going and like pretty much be a, like a dj stand almost and then like uh they'd be like playing all this like really like fun music uh <laughs> like sweat swag surf i don't know if you know what that song is absolutely but uh like everyone would just be like vibing like uh, <laughs> there have been a lot of teams and like uh teams like just come in and like the coach speaks but uh yeah, yeah. that was kind of like a cool thing to to add a totally. little bit pamela surpri- surprised you don't know about that pamela no <laughs> no no swag uh, surfing for you <laughs> oh, I feel so uncool right now because you guys are both like, "Yeah, vibe," and I'm over here like, "No." I, but that's that's like a really that. that's like a really neat like uh, kind of insight of that. Like, I feel like it just makes things like I, you never saw. It wasn't really like public, you know what I mean? Like, you didn't see too right. much like media coverage on that. But I feel like it's a cool like touch point and like insight on what goes on. Like the rules kind of tweak where you know defense you used to not really be able to celebrate now it's kind of loosening up a little bit and i think it kind of right. it's better for the viewer i think like being yeah able to no see kind for of sure things. and uh just from like uh i mean Neg- Nagy, coach Nagy with the bears like he, he was one of my like favorite head coaches he just kind of um really like uh i've had like i mean i've had uh nine different head coaches to kind of like judge upon and like he's just somebody that really like commands the respect of his his team while kind of like also being like that cool guy that's just like uh um like one of one of us as well so um which is like cool to cool to be a part of because i mean um there's definitely uh from a position coach standpoint and from like a head coach standpoint there's like so many variations in the league of like structure wise and just like uh because obviously like the patriots it's like the patriot way where like you're not having any fun. And then obviously they've won a lot, but um, then you have like Kansas city where they have like a basketball hoop in the locker room. And I'm like, uh, I did cross up Tariq kill once. Like, (laughs) like we, we played one-on-one in the locker room and I I beat him. So uh, not gonna. (laughs) Well, now it's on record. So I love that. Which kind of segues me into my next thing is you spent some time in Kansas city. 
Yes. And you were there when Alex Smith was quarterback. Yeah. Correct. And Patrick Mahomes was yeah. his rookie year or was it the year? Yeah, it was his rookie, rookie year. year. Uh, yeah, that's when you did there. Anybody outside of Andy Reid looking like a pure genius, was there anyone else on that team that knew <clears throat> the next year he was potentially going to be the MVP? Um, I guess – so I'll, I'll say this, like um, – like that was that was the year I was like starting most of the year and like right. during practice, like you have the offense going, then you have the defense going, and when like the offense is going, like they're going against the practice uh, defense team, and then like vice versa. And if like I wasn't out there, I wasn't really like concentrated on like the because he was scout team quarterback, and Got I wasn't it. really like uh, like too. Uh, I was I was so focused on like what I was doing that I really didn't uh, pay too much attention. But I mean, sure. you could definitely see he was making like uh, there's like pretty good velocity on his balls. And um, but I mean, nobody could have uh, nobody was even I mean talking about him at uh, during the season. Um, but then obviously he uh, started that last game of the year in Denver and. Uh, I mean, he he, had, he made three or four throws that, I mean, are like, uh, like how did he make that throw? Like, right. back leg, like, um, like those those throws that you just, like, know know him for making, like, uh, regularly now. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, you, you could definitely see that that was, like, uh, something that uh, there was a lot of potential there. But until you get, like, a bigger uh, sample size, I mean, you just, you just don't know. Because, sure. um, I mean – there's quarterbacks that have like uh, balled out and then like have kind of flopped the rest of their careers. So uh, I, I will I will I will say this though, like when they uh, when we traded Smith and then uh, like the the first day of OTAs when like uh, Mahomes got in the huddle uh, when he was a starter, like because like the the starters weren't used to his like voice really, yeah. and like. Uh, just like his cadence is like, what? Like, they're like, what? Like, what is this guy? Like, <laughs> and honestly, he's got kind of a an awkward voice. I mean, I think it's fair to say it doesn't. I mean, a little it, bit. It, but, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, like, it was it was like a transition for like the guys to kind of like uh, get accustomed to his voice, just because um, his cadence was a little bit different. Sure. And uh, every quarterback has their own quirks, but then like obviously. Um, that preseason, he had like a 65-yard bomb to Tariq in uh, in Atlanta, like a preseason game. And then, like, uh, I think that was like one of the farthest throws, uh, like in the NFL history, almost. Like, I think it was like 67 yards or something. And you could see at that point, like, okay, this guy's gonna, this guy's gonna be good. Yeah. Um, so, no, uh, I enjoyed my time in Kansas City. Um, Unfortunately, so like, uh, so this year, uh, I wasn't with the team like the last third of the season, and I had had a few different uh, workouts here or there, and the Chiefs actually flew me in with like three weeks left in the season, and they'd had an injury that they weren't sure of um, how bad it was going to be. They flew me in, uh, like I wasn't doing a workout or anything. They're like, we know what you can do. Um, so they flew me in, gave me a physical, but like, uh, okay, so like the guy isn't hurt as bad as we thought, so we're not going to sign you right now. But um, you're kind of a, our like emergency alignment. So if anyone gets hurt like the last three weeks of the season into the playoffs, like we'll like sign you probably as our like emergency alignments. And so, uh, like, long story short, I was I was an injury away from getting a Super Bowl ring. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, it's, like, it's like being on call, <laughs> right? Uh, so that that one kind of hurt, but yeah, definitely. Um, it was easier to swallow when I was sipping on ramen in Japan while I, I got the news, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's, but yeah, we um, talked about a little bit about, about it before Pam jumped on. Tell us about your uh, your little traveling experience that, that you went on. Right. So I was in um, Japan for six nights. I was in uh, Tokyo. So I did, uh, um, so I did some like, so there's like this go-kart racing thing. 
Um, oh, I saw where that. You, <laughs> you literally like, uh, so you go to this like place, they have like go-karts, you like uh, pick out a costume. Somehow I fit in a onesie. Like, uh, it literally like, I had to pull it up to my knee, but, uh, <laughs> but I fit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah like you literally just like drive around in scooters it was like a two-hour thing um and they said like they made it they made it very clear that if you if you throw any like if you have any bananas or use any bananas like they, they drive right back like you're done with the day uh <laughs> <laughs> couldn't make anybody spin out or anything right no what? none of that <laughs> what a cool thing to do though Right. I never thought but, you'd do that in Japan. You know what I mean? No, I mean it was wild because I mean <laughs> you're driving and literally like a semi truck like whizzes by you in the next lane and like uh, kind of terrifying. But um, that's wild. No, that was yeah, really cool. I will say that. Like one thing that I found so interesting about you was, you know, yeah, you're in the NFL, you're an athlete, um, which is what you've done for your career straight out of college. However, you do love traveling, and I feel like the choices you choose where you travel are so interesting because you're not just going to, like, Jamaica or Hawaii and to, like, these typical resort towns that I feel like most athletes choose to go to. Right. So what is it that makes you choose, like, the locations you do go to? And, like, what are, like, some of your top ones that you learned a lot from? Um, so kind of like my inspiration to travel. Uh, so I have a cousin who's like three or four years older than me. She was adopted from South Korea, actually crazy side story. So she was adopted from South Korea. And when she was, so she went after she graduated college, she went over to teach, uh, English over there, kind of like learn about the culture. And, uh, she like looked up at her biological parents and, uh, like set up a meet with her biological father to like, meet him and just like uh just learn a little bit about them um so her like parents from the u.s flew over and her biological father like pretty much uh told her that like, she had an identical twin and they kept the other one because like it was a little bit healthier because they couldn't afford another one um so <laughs> what literally like so like for 23 years of her life she like didn't know she had an identical twin and then wow like, that would that be out. the trippiest thing i don't even know how i'd react honestly right uh and then like she looked like just like her i guess so um but yeah so like that's wild side story to for her but um so she does like three like two or three month trips abroad and all like solo and stuff so i kind of was like if this uh five two uh female can like travel by herself <laughs> like me as a giant like it's pretty much like she has like a it's pr i pretty much like when i travel i pretty much feel like i have like a full security detail around me is like with how big i am so <laughs> um but no uh i, I i'm just uh, kind of drawn to like more uh, obscure places, I guess. Um, so I guess like one of my like more unique places, I guess would be like Cambodia. So like I went to Angkor Wat, which is uh, if you've seen the movie Tomb Raider, um, like that, like Tomb Raider, like was uh, filmed over in, in Cambodia, like at those temples. But uh like, you know, you're in like a crazy country when uh, you're gonna like a so, like, they have the little uh, scooter taxis. So, you're getting a scooter taxi, and the scooter taxi guy was like, um, Like, do you want to shoot a bazooka? Like, you, like, they literally have like grenade launchers, and you can like shoot them at this, like, you can build up a hut. Like, it's terrible, but like, you can like put an animal in the hut or whatever, or like, it's, it's honestly awful. Like, I was going to ask, did he shoot the bazooka, but I'm not going to. I did not. No, uh, <laughs> there's no animals in the huts. So, like, I mean, for one, like, I was like, it's probably some, like, Soviet bazooka that's, like, going to, like, blow up in my face. So, like, yeah. not going to do that. Also, sure. like, sounds like not, not a great idea. Um, <laughs> but I actually heard, like, a stand-up comedy routine, like, a few years later that, like, reference that and like i feel like most of the people in the audience like thought he was joking but like no like <laughs> i can confirm on wow. the ground that like that's the thing how long is the flight um, to cambodia 
So I did. So I went over from Thailand, um, but okay. for the flight to Thailand was like twenty one with the layover. So. So being six eight, how exactly is it flying for twenty one hours? Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not great. Uh, I'll tell you that. Like, I'm, I'm more frugal than I am um, wanting, like, willing to spend that extra money for, like, business class or anything. So, usually I get bumped to Exero. Um, usually they, like, see me and they're like, sir, like, here you go. <laughs> but um, I've had a few flights. Like, when I went to Israel, like, my flight from Chicago to Istanbul in Turkey was 10 hours. And... Uh, it was a completely full flight, so like, I did not get bumped, and like, it was packed. Um, but um, how do you sit? Actually, like, your knees like up to your chest, and do you just like kind of ride um, out? And... I mean, it was a, it was like enough. Like, I, it wasn't great, but it was enough. Uh, actually, I actually have a funny story in in Peru. Uh, like, I took a domestic flight in Peru because I was going. Um, there's this area in like northern Peru that I went where like nobody speaks English really and I don't speak any Spanish so it was, it was an interesting thing but uh, on the what flight called, do you remember what was that what was it called do you remember oh so like the place I went was uh, it's called uh, Chachapoyas okay and so I didn't fly there I had to fly to Chiclayo from Lima and then take a ten and a half hour overnight bus ride to this town um, but uh like on the flight to Chiclayo uh so it's a domestic flight and like obviously like you think of Peruvian and you think like uh obviously like small like very small like the so Indian. like the, the the seating is like literally like four inches less legroom than like U.S. flights so um I couldn't I couldn't put my knees straight like I couldn't put them on the and like they had no exit row or anything on the flight so I like kept it in the aisle for like takeoff and then i sat in the bathroom for an hour oh like there God. were two bathrooms <laughs> so like <laughs> but when they said like oh we're gonna land like i like oh okay. so, like, I'll the bathroom. <laughs> i go back to my seat like put my legs uh, in the aisle uh <laughs> so, so you made it work you make it i've work. made it work okay. it's not been perfect but i've made it work um okay. and so like that, that I I guess I'll reference that into um, so Chick or so Chajapoyas is, is uh, like deep in like the northern northern Peru and like the Amazonian highlands and uh, so like I'd always wanted to go to to um, Angel Falls in Venezuela but obviously it's in Venezuela so you can't really go um, so like they have this really cool waterfall in um, northern Peru. Peru that I like was kind of researching and <clears throat> I like went to Wikipedia to like check how like tall it was and it was like the 19th tallest waterfall in the world but then there was one that was like the fifth tallest waterfall in the world that was like also in Peru so I like um naturally like looked up that one and there was like one blog post <clears throat> on the internet about it like on the whole whole internet like there's one blog post about this waterfall and it's like the fifth tallest waterfall in the world and uh so literally i like uh dug into it and i'm like okay i'm gonna like go to this waterfall so um i get to this like uh i get to chachapoyas which is like a tw town of like twenty thousand, where like nobody speaks english except for like my uh hostel front desk guy and um yeah, like I, I meet some Germans who like uh, help me like translate for like the taxi driver to like get to this like tiny village where like the actual waterfall is at. So um, that was that was about as like, because I mean, as an English speaker, like um, pretty much wherever you go, like you're gonna find some people that speak English. But like there, it was like very tough and. Like restaurants, nobody spoke English. I actually went to a restaurant and I asked for like a something and they brought me a bottle of wine and I didn't know how to say like no to it. So I just accepted it and drank a bottle of wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, not having like a guide or anything like that. You're just, just really under on your own. Right. 
Um, and I think that's like trips you've done alone, basically for, for the most part. I'm assuming, right? Yes. So like, I pretty much exclusively travel alone. Um, there's a few places I go with a group, but um, for the, I mean, it, it it's kind of exhilarating, kind of like figuring out your own stuff out and uh, kind of just like um, not really knowing what the, like the next day is going to bring. So uh, yeah, I, I, I just. I've always loved uh, kind of the, the travel and just like um, it and and like the thing about traveling alone is like um, you don't kind of have to live by anyone else's itinerary. You can just kind of like do your own thing. And then uh, I mean, not that I wouldn't uh, love to travel with other people, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get you. That's yeah. Is that what you're usually doing during off season? Do you kind of plan all your travel around that? Yeah. So usually like the, uh, like I, I usually haven't been in, in the U S for the Super Bowl, uh, just because, um, I mean, I, I wish I was at the Super Bowl, so I'd be in the U S for the Super Bowl, but, uh, it hasn't worked out that way. Sure. So, not yet. Um, <laughs> not yet. Never know. Um, but, but no, so I, I'm usually, uh, like in some obscure place, uh, like right after the season, and then, so I, I remember, um, like at my hostel in Thailand, like, uh, like the Super Bowl was at like 8 a.m. there, and like they were watching in the downstairs and everything. And it's it's just funny to, because uh, like there's there's always like an American or like somebody who likes football at the hostel, so like you're always gonna see the Super Bowl even if it's like on the other side of the globe. So. Um, <laughs> You, you haven't missed one. You've been able to watch them still, just around the world. I've, I've been able to watch them for the most part. So, um, and like sometimes I, like this year, I kind of wanted to just like, like separate myself just because of how close I was to possibly going. <laughs> but, uh, but no, uh, I, I definitely, um, like Japan was a great place to, to like, get over like the whole like not getting the super bowl thing because uh ramen is my favorite food so uh i actually had like five different bowls of ramen when i was there and uh <laughs> the ramen healed you it, it healed me so um, <laughs> it's not just for when for you're sure. feeling sick or hungover yes <laughs> um and it's not it's not too heavy it's like um but yeah, and I'm, I'm a big foodie, so, like, traveling has been uh, great for uh, experiencing, like, new cuisines and everything, too, so. Um, so your cousin was the one who kind of gave you the idea to go to, uh, like, more, I guess, culturally different places, right? Yeah, so, like, she, um, we actually, uh, it's kind of a longer story, but, like, we met up in uh, Thailand for a few days. Oh, how um, fun. And so she was actually flying from Minneapolis and I was already in Thailand. It was like, it ended up that like, we were just going to be both in Thailand at the same time. So she was flying from Minneapolis and there was actually like a snowstorm that like kept her delayed in Minneapolis. It was funny because it's like 90 degrees in Thailand at the time. So I'm not really thinking about snow, but, um, so she got delayed and we were supposed to, uh, <clears throat> meet up at the airport to fly like south. Um, to go to this like these floating bungalows on this lake in the south and so i still got on my plane to go south and then um she got in later and flew to like a different area in southern thailand and we both just kind of like were on these both both these sides and just like met in the middle and um we didn't really have any communication so uh i so when i landed i had to like um, there was one bus a day to get to this like place that I wanted to go. It was like a three hour drive. And, uh, like I was, I was, I was on this bus for like, uh, 45 minutes until I realized it was like not going to where I needed it to go. <laughs> like the bus from the airport to like the bus I needed to get to. So I wow. hopped off the bus, um, and like, uh, hailed like a, a tuk-tuk which is like the little scooter things 
And I was like, you need to get me like here in like 10 minutes because my bus is taking off. And he's like, oh, that's like 20 minutes away. But so he literally like drove his, his tuk-tuk to his house like on the way. And then we hopped in his car and then he like literally like put, turned his blasters on and was like weaving in and out of traffic like on each side of the road. And uh, luckily I... I got to the, tr the bus station and the bus like uh, left like 10, 15 minutes late. So I, I made to the bus. Um, and as this is going on, like my cousin is getting into like a, uh, her own, like, so as bus, I say like, uh, like a kind of like big van. Um, she's getting into a van with like a bunch of school children at like this other town on the other side and like hoping that it's going to this destination and we both end up at the same spot like three hours later um with like in within 10 minutes of each other so it was kind of like a <laughs> miraculous awesome. uh meeting point but uh it could have no, gone so um, different <laughs> yes and then like after that she went she went like hiking in nepal for like 20 days um she does a lot of like crazy um, cool stuff that like I I definitely haven't done before. So um, it's nice to have somebody to like kind of like go in their footsteps and like know that it's like an acceptable thing to do. So yeah, absolutely. Um, but but no, um, yeah. Uh, it's like like travel is like really like kind of shaped me and like helped me grow as a person. And it's just been because uh, I mean once you're kind of like on your own it's uh you just kind of learn a lot about your uh you just kind of like grow as a person just like learning about yourself uh, when you're kind of like put in those uh like vulnerable situations so and I, I know. know um anthony bourdain also is a huge um i wouldn't say right. idol but someone that you definitely look up to you know and i yeah. know you've read all his books right yeah for sure so um, do you take a lot of influence too from his travels and, you know, kind of how it shaped him? Yeah. So, um, I have his cookbook too. Um, but, uh, like have, it's kind of funny cause like most of the stuff in his cookbook is like, um, like quail or like uh, wild boar. And I'm like, I don't know if I'm like where I'm going to get this stuff in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be tough. <laughs> but, um, so actually, um, like one of my favorite shows was Parts Unknown with Anthony Bourdain. And uh, I, I've been to a few places he's been, but uh, in Cuba he went and there's an actual, uh, I actually like kind of went to one of the places that he went to and it's called uh, Fabrique de Arde Cubano. And it's this huge factory. And it's like uh, probably the coolest like bar scene I've ever been to. So it's oh, a- wow. It's this huge, so it's just picture this huge factory that they've remodeled into like, um, there's probably like seven different like big rooms like in the place. And there's like an art studio. There's uh, like two or three different like live music places. Then there's like uh, a club, then there's a bar, and then there's like a another food spot in Is the back in Cuba? outside. Yeah, it's in Cuba. I mean, and man, tickets are so cheap right now. <laughs> time. Yeah. There's, there's one uh, thing I'm going to benefit from this goddamn Corona. Let me tell you, it's traveling. Right. <laughs> no. And then they had a uh, flower based size mojitos. I'll never forget this. Like, uh, wow. so it was literally like, like, like this big. And then like, uh, wow. they're $10 a piece. I got two of them and I was just like, <laughs> yeah. so, uh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it, it was it was cool um i gotta remember we gotta remember this sean i know i need to like i'm gonna go back on these and like write all this stuff down yeah have, like a whole <laughs> log of things to do <laughs> i don't like, drink no. anymore but like i mean i'll sip things here and there but i might just get a vase in cuba in cuba don't oh, have yeah. a good time that's right uh, honestly it's probably the coolest like bar i've ever been to was that it was that so place good. in cuba um but the, the funny thing about Cuba is, uh, so I literally had no plans going there. Um, I was coming from uh, Peru, so I went through Bogota and was flying to Havana. And I like, so I, I'm there for three nights. I don't know where I'm staying. I don't have like any particular plans for these three nights. 
and uh in havana or in cuba like there's no wi-fi really there's like spots in the city that are wi-fi um but like there's only like a few of them throughout the city and you have to like go into a hotel pay for the wi-fi and then like go out there and use it for 30 minutes so it's like very spotty i don't know if it's changed since then but um but when i landed i like met a british girl who was like on my plane and we started talking and then she's like oh i'm with like two other guys and then there's like a third guy that didn't make it because he had like an Indian passport and didn't have the right visa. So <clears throat> literally I uh, like share a taxi with these people into the city, like uh, throw my bags in their Airbnb just to like uh, have a spot for now. And then I end up spending all three days with them staying at their Airbnb and like they, uh, they become like really good friends of mine. And like they live in London and like whenever I visit in London, I visit them. So that's so that's, cool. That's awesome. I love yeah. that. Um, that. That's one thing I love about travel. Like, because uh, like, let's say I, I went to New York last year and I have like four different, like, I, I don't know like anyone from New York other than like uh, from traveling, but I know like four different groups of people from traveling, like that live in New York. So I like, I, uh, it was like tough to fit them all in when I was, when I was there. Sure. So. Yeah. Um, friends all over the world is like, yeah literally right. all yeah. over the world yes for sure um that, that is that's such an awesome thing about traveling now i feel like i don't travel enough not yeah. even close i feel bad now so i gotta step my travel game up man i mean honestly i've been looking at a lot of flights it's the one thing i do miss um i travel very often but obviously we can't right. which has been killing me because usually by now i have summer planned but I'm kind right. of going over these questions. I feel like we hit most of them, but I there is one that Sean wrote that was really interesting to me. Um, you know, obviously coming, like being in the NFL and with any sport, really, MLS, NBA, you name it. One thing that is a part of the job is how quickly things can change for you guys. You know, you guys could obviously if you sign a contract, you're on a team for a year, two years. As soon as right. that's up, like there's no guarantee where you're going to go. Right. So um, like what is something that like, is undervalued during the transition from one team to another? Like, what is something that you've learned that has helped you during these transitions? And like, what is something that most of, like fans wouldn't know? Like people like me who just see you on one team one day and then right. like, oh shit, he's on another team. Wonder what happened. Yeah. Um, I don't think like some fans realize how like quick it is. Um, Cause just literally like um, you get a call and then you're like flying out that night and you could potentially be there for like, four months and you have to like pack for those four months and like um and i mean it's it's such a quick transition and then um when you get there they usually give you like uh like a week to two weeks of like uh, a hotel and then you have to like figure out your own like place and everything um but yeah it's just like so dramatic of where like um you're like in one city and then like uh, you get a call and you like fly out that night and oh, wow. you're in another city for like four months. Um, but it's like this year it was kind of, it was, it was a kind of a roller coaster. Um, so when I was in Miami, I was in Miami for like uh, five days. So um, it's almost like I a flew in, but not, obviously. Right. Uh, so I flew in for a workout um I guess one other guy they signed me and then like five days later um the Cowboys had released like a defensive end talking about Charlatan and um they like off they put it in like a waivers claim for him which is like uh like after 24 hours whoever has like the highest claim uh gets to take him and they had it so they're like um yeah, like, uh, you have to, like, release you just because, like, you're the last guy we sign. But, like, we want to bring you. So this this was, like, five days into signing me. Wow. And then they're like, well, but, like, we still, like, want to keep you around. But, like, we want to, like, sign you back on Monday. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's such a um, crazy. And, and so they had, like, some things happen over the weekend where um, they like wanted me to like, they were like, we want you to like, start this week. And I'm like, I'm not even on the team right now. Like, um, 
but then uh so you know, the panthers also called and signed me uh before i like went back just because um like i, I was just looking for uh, a team that kind of had like the soup the uh, playoff potential and at that time like the dolphins just didn't so sure um yeah, that that was that was kind of a crazy thing just cuz uh I've never been in a situation where like okay, you have like an hour left, you have to decide like this team or that team. And it was just like such a quick um yeah. so stressful. It's yeah. so stressful. Um and like you're looking into like for a guy in my situation, you're looking into like oh, are they going to like bring any guys back from injured reserve? Like oh, are they like um like what are they like full year like uh, outlook for you on the on the team and um you have to like kind of like factor all of that in because as like a guy who's um like I've never really been like guaranteed a roster spot like I've, I've felt comfortable like when I've started and everything but right. you're always kind of uh looking over your like you're not looking over your shoulder but like you realize that like um it's it's funny because uh, like every every guy every every team has like a grim reaper that as we call them which is like the the guy that like tells people that they get cut yeah so like uh, I I just remember in Kansas City like uh, whenever it was like cut day like uh, everyone would know like when the grim grim reaper was coming around and <laughs> yeah that, like makes me nervous just hearing it I'm like Ooh. it's all right. It's almost like when the principal would come into your classroom, like in school, why are you here? Like, go to another class. Right, pretty much. Um, But, I mean, it's, uh, I I, like, obviously being on nine teams, uh, like, ideally, I'd rather have been on, like, three or four just uh, longer stints with teams. But um, it's been, like, very cool to see uh just like the different styles and like uh obviously it's like a foodie uh i've had like a bunch of different cuisine um like probably my favorite being new orleans um like i don't know if you've been have you been to new orleans i have i love new i mean i have a love-hate relationship for new orleans i have no problems (laughs) i am sorry that place i i don't think i could do it for more than like two days it is oh, just such a madhouse. Maybe three days, but it's aggressive. Um, it's beautiful though, and the food is delicious. Oh my god, is it so ah. flavorful? It's I was so right. I was just there like two months ago. You were there for a while, weren't you there? Yeah, Tom? I was there for like a week. <laughs> yeah, I, I think wasn't yeah, I just was leaving? Weren't we like just missing each other? Yeah, so I was there for my sister's thirtieth in September, um, and I was only there for twenty four hours. Best trip. I ever like it was so it was like perfect because you guys know how bourbon street can be <laughs> it's just you know it's aggressive it's aggressive right it's aggressive. Yeah. yeah um do, do you remember it did you ever go to uh uh bacchanal when you were there is that yeah. a familiar thing mm-hmm. I'm so so it's, 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 yeah so it's just like uh it's this wine bar that's in like kind of like off the main strip but okay. um they have like so it's the whole backyard is just like a bunch of different tables and everything. And they have jazz music every, uh, cool. every lunch and every evening. And it's just like, uh, um, like whenever I see if anyone's going to New Orleans, I was like, you have to like go to fucking all. It's like, God, I, I was there. I was there for like a week and I was just hitting so many people up for suggestions. Cause I was by myself the whole time. Now right. You, know, you got to stay in contact with Brian. I know. I yeah. know that would have been perfect, uh, but I got I some, mean, good recommendations but that would have been that would have come come in handy the only names i I remember because i went to so many places is lafitte's because we were at lafitte's so much and uh the dungeon (laughs) 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 i was there for a birthday and um obviously cafe dumont yes um it's like the spot to go for um God, I'm blanking on those names. The powdered donuts. What do you call uh, them? The, the, the beignets. 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 Yeah. Oh, yes. I love beignets. Um, Brian, what about in Chicago? What's what's the what's the go to spot for food? Um, so like deep dish. I'm a Giordano's guy. Okay. So, um, like the 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 forever feud is between Lou Manlotti's and Giordano's, and I, I guess um, I just I just became a Giordano's guy and I stuck to it. So, um, but 
I mean, there, there's such a like wild food scene in Chicago. Um, yes. Like I, I know um, LA has a great scene and everything, but um, like Chicago, like uh, so there's this one place. Uh, so I, I go by like um, sometimes I, I say like my like favorite bite in a city, like like the whole city. If you could pick like one bite to have, yeah. Um, it's this like uh it's called girl and the goat and it's this like pork shank that's like uh super crispy on the outside and then just like tender like succulent on the inside and then it comes with a homemade naan and then like uh homemade hot sauce and ranch and you like put them in the naan bread wow. and it's just uh I'm yeah hungry. it's <laughs> it's uh <laughs> i'm i'm gonna definitely to check it. what was that have you been to charleston I uh, haven't been to Charleston. I've heard the food's great. That is a foodie heaven, like a foodie heaven spot. I <laughs> went my way through that town. I've gone twice now. And I usually uh -huh. like traveling within the States. Um, I usually try to travel internationally, but Charleston is a place that I would go to over and over again. Right. It's so good. The food is delicious. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. So if you can, definitely add that to your list of travels. Right. Um, so like two spots – kind of internationally but like close by that are like foodie spots i want to get to like i've heard montreal is like an amazing food scene mm. and it's like a two hour two or three hour flight for me and then uh I, i've always wanted to get to mexico city so oh, i've i've done mexico uh, city and the food is really good I've yeah been food tours there it's okay really um i've heard the food scene is just or the the street food scene just like uh all the street food is really good um but yeah, that those those were what I was planning on doing right about now. But, uh, <laughs> obviously, well, yeah. um, to kind of tie back to the stress that you were talking about with how quickly things turn around, um, I did see that most sports teams are now talking about sports starting up actually really soon. Um, a yeah. lot of teams are aiming for the summer. However, the rule is that you guys would all have to be away from people for the three month duration in quarantine. I've seen right. a lot of athletes speak out against it, and I'm going to assume it's mainly from the stress aspect of it. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think that'll actually go through, or do you think because of the mental strain it would put on the athletes that you guys would all kind of agree not to do it? So I did, I did read an article, a very, very interesting article, just kind of talking schematically about it. Um, they kind of said like Dallas was like the uh, ideal spot like it has a lot of like big stadiums and it could hold people but uh like like from a schematic standpoint like i don't see how they would be able to quarantine like every athlete from like interacting with like uh people in the community mm -hmm. like that that'd just be like such a um like because i mean you have, you have such big personalities and like guys that uh some guys that don't necessarily like um want to listen to a lot of a lot of that stuff and We're like will breakers. bend the rules got like, <laughs> um, like to hold a bunch of like uh really uh dynamic personalities like together for like four months seems like a pretty impossible feat yeah. uh yeah totally um obviously like um if that's what they have to do to get a paycheck then uh uh that's what they have to do but right. um yeah, I don't know. It's it's going to be interesting for sure. Uh, it, it's obviously we've never encountered anything like this, and with football being such a physical sport, like uh, I mean, if if one guy, like if let's say like a running back uh, had it and then went it, went into a game like without being symptomatic, like I mean, every guy that like tackles him, I feel like would get it. So yeah, it's um, a great point. Opposed to like tennis or baseball or golf it's like less of a physical like uh interaction sport where like football is like the ultimate of where like uh i mean you're if you're like you're in a pile with like five other dudes like, <laughs> it's like yeah, all, honestly, everyone's getting it like... right uh no i mean it'll, it'll be interesting um i mean obviously uh I mean, hopefully, like, by that time, there'll be, like, uh, very sufficient testing. So, like, uh, they can, like, pretty much test NFL players weekly. And then I feel like 
that could at least somewhat alleviate the the worries, like test everyone before the game and everything. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, they, they test us so much for drug testing, you know, I feel like they just uh, – <laughs> Yeah, just switch the testing over to uh, the virus. I'll, yeah. Also, I did kind of think about this. Uh, I mean, obviously, like, um, like they're not able to drug test people, like, right now. So, I feel like some guys are, might be – might be uh, pushing the boundaries a little bit. Uh, Absolutely. Because you're not, you're not going to have a guy come to your house and drug test you now. So it's, like, not a thing. So um, I feel like there will be some guys where you're like, what what that guy do during quarantine? Like, yeah. come on. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure there's several. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. That's, uh, <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Well, I know you're from, um, given the Wisconsin roots, if – Somehow NBA gets to resume, and yes. our beloved Lakers end up running into the Bucks in the finals. Oh, um, yes, that's your that's your squad, I hear. Um, so I'm, I'm like I'm like half and half like T Wolves <laughs> and Bucks. So ah. I was on the border. So I was a Packer fan, but like I'm I'm, I'm right in between. So All right. Um, like the T Wolves have been tragic since KG. So um, it's nice to have one of my teams doing well. Um, but yeah. Uh. It was definitely tough to lose as Brogdon, um, like as a point guard and everything. He, he was like the defensive guy to lock down people. But no, I, I think uh, I think we they were they were rolling when before quarantine, and uh, obviously like those matchups that they had during the season were pretty intense. So um, I mean, it'd be it'd be cool to see. I, I, I'm interested to see uh, what the NBA does if they try to. Because um, it'd be wild just to see, like, a time where all, like, professional sports are, like, playing their seasons at the same time. Like, that would yeah. just be, like... That would be nuts. Madness. Uh, <laughs> just everything on at once. Yeah. The, right. NBA, the NBA one is tricky because they're, at least for football, you're still out of season. Yeah. yeah. But, like, imagine just being right, like... In, not in the middle, like your seasons, I mean, you're right next to the playoffs and there's so much on the line, everything you've worked for to that point. And obviously the situation right. we're in is greater than that. But, you know, at some point if it resumes, there's so much to take into like consideration. How do you catch up? It's crazy. Right. Yeah. Well, I'm like, what I've been saying about MLS too, though. MLS and um, MLB were supposed to start. Mm-hmm. Like they were all getting ready to start. MLS was already starting season. their season. They were already the yeah. first – weeks I think of season mm-hmm. and then MLB was about to start they're like a month away or less yeah yeah so yeah, yeah it was a weird time um, for sports very right um uh, I mean it's it's at, like the one positive like now like with the draft going is like that people at least have like something to grasp onto yes um they, they have that <laughs> they have Tiger King and then they have uh <laughs> the MJ documentary Yes. So, true. Uh, have you been uh, staying active during quarantine? Or are you still trying to like keep things as active? Um. As you could be so I have. Uh, I I bought a bunch of like home uh, equipment. Like I got like a hundred pound dumbbell. I got some like bands and everything. Um, so I'm I'm trying. Uh, yeah. I, I got my bike the other day, so nice. um, that's nice to have. Went for a nice little twenty miler. So. Um, very flat, so yeah, not, not impressive at all. But, uh, <laughs> Just cruising. I think it's more yeah. than what most people can say. Right, um, yeah, but and then I got I got uh, on on another end. Like I had ordered Girl Scout cookies for my sister like months ago, <laughs> and I, I finally got them. So uh, the 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 twelve boxes have become like nine. <laughs> by, uh, 